Hi everyone, Shane R. Monroe here. Today, something a little bit different. Yes, another portable monitor. It was sent to me free of charge. No expectation of positive review. This is from Mage Doc, and this portable monitor actually has a built-in touchscreen, which makes it a little different than some of the other stuff that I've covered. We have our standard manual, a power brick, a USB-C to USB-A cable for said power brick. And then we have a included HDMI cable, as well as a USB-C to USB-C cable. And let's open this guy up. Now, at first I was freaked out because there was all these scratches and stuff on the front and there was no obvious screen protector on here. Normally there's a little tab that says pull me or something on it. But in this case, I was kind of freaked out. It took me a while to actually figure that out. On the back here, uh, we have our kickstand, right? And it does have a metal hinge in there. That's always nice. Uh, I think this will be durable enough. I've seen more durable kickstands on these things, but it seems to uh, hold things up well and you can get the angle that you want. We have some rubber feet on the bottom, which is great. I like that. And on the back, we have two rear facing speakers. Don't expect a whole lot. And over here we have USB-C for power and USB-C for uh, data input along with HDMI. I think we're in good shape. Let's get these cables out here and see what we can do. We're gonna look at this in a variety of ways. Let's go ahead and make this ready. All right, so we have USB-C for power and USB-C for data. And of course that HDMI cable uh, is going to be used a little bit later. I don't know why one's got a color on it, but that's okay. A full size HDMI, that's one of the requisites for portable monitors for me. And of course a high quality USB-C cable that should be able to handle both data and power transmission, which is what we're looking for. So today we're gonna look at the monitor along with the Steam Deck, the Nintendo Switch, and my Samsung phone using Samsung Dex, and we'll use a laptop, and we'll see which one of these benefits the most. So first off, let's plug it in. We've got it on power now, as well as a data cable, and you can see Samsung Dex pops right up. In fact, um, it, it actually works remarkably well. Honestly, that little corner was a little hard to hit, but I mean, it's sort of the angle that I was sitting at, but you can see it, it actually works great for decks. So if you're one of those people that like to have your phone around to sort of use as a laptop, this is pretty cool. Uh, like I said, it, it works exactly as you would expect it to work. Uh, the It's hard to see some quality on the screen here. We're gonna look more at that in a minute. You can also see swiping works. And it's really hard to get a feeling for if there's any ghosting or anything going on, but we're gonna cover that later. This is more the compatibility phase of things. So Samsung Dex checks out. Next up, we're gonna take the Nintendo Switch, plug it in, and we'll be using the Joy-Cons uh, deattached. It's the only way it works, by the way. Um, there we go. And we'll, now we don't wanna do an update. Get out of here. Sync up. There we go. All right, perfect. So now let's take a look. Yeah. Yeah, once I figure out the controls, I'm so used to playing on the deck. Yeah, there we go. She looks good. She looks good. And again, we're going to do a little bit more performance video later. Again, just want to see if these things work and work well. Next up, the Steam Deck. And yes, we do have a power input as well as the data cable. So we should be passing through power. And you can see right here, if I could stop touching the screen, you can see right here that the uh, the uh, charging time actually looks like what we would expect. Now, of course, I'm not gonna trust it. I'm gonna put this guy up to a USB-C power meter and make sure we're getting through the appropriate power. And of course, we need to go to desktop and see how this works as an extended monitor. But look at this, we got like 36, 37 uh, watts going in and there's nothing running, so that's good. All right, so you can see we have here an extended desktop and uh, this kind of work. I mean, that, okay, that's fine. But what about, wait a minute, what, what's this? Okay, so the problem here is, is that the Steam Deck's display is actually a portrait display that's sort of tricked into being a uh, horizontal one. So if we flipped it over and made it a portrait one, maybe in the settings, it might work out, but it's just, eh. dang it, I was really hoping that this would work out well. So I went in here and I mucked with the settings a little bit. I made them uh, clones, I did extended, I did a whole battery of tests here. And while it works great as an external monitor, 
or a second screen if you need to do some work. Um, it's just the, the, the value add of this thing as a touchscreen isn't really seen. Now let's plug it into a Windows 11 laptop. This you would expect to work absolutely perfect. And honestly, it does, right? So I've got, uh, I've got the screens right next to each other. You can see I'm going back and forth. And the question of the day, of course, is what's the touchscreen look like? It works great. It's not super high polling, but it's enough to get the job done. You can see it all works as you would hope it would. So this is probably a good companion to a laptop. Okay, so now let's do some menu work here. These, this is like the exact same menu I see on every single one. It uses that weird two button control where the menu button also acts as enter. There's a back button above it. And then above that are two up and downs. There's a particular trick to getting this to work. Now we're looking at the brightness here because a lot of people want to know how dark can I get it? Well, that's how dark you can get it. And you can get to about 50% brightness. And then after that, there's a diminishing return on that, right? So you could see, can you even see it going up? Because I couldn't. Um, yeah, so, and then of course, there's everything else you'd want to monkey with contrast, black levels, yada, yada, yada. This does do HDR. Um, let's see, what else we got in here? Volume control. Yeah, all the standard stuff. You're going to want to leave the volume at 100% because let's be honest, um, most of these monitors just don't have the oomph for that sort of thing. All right, well, that looks pretty good. It's a weird button combination, but it looks good. So here's an attempt to show you a close, well-lit uh, area here where I can show you the quality of the screen. It really does look great. It's got good viewing angles. I'm not seeing any ghosting or any latency, which is what you would, you know, that's what you're probably here to find out. Are th is there any ghosting? And you can see it's pretty clean. The color reproduction's really good. It looks uh, just as good as my uh, Switch screen does, for sure. And of course, this is a nice high-speed title with a lot of movement. That works out well. Now, we do want to test out the HDMI out, uh, just to make sure that it works, of course. And you can see here that with the uh, Steam Deck on a dock, right? So it's on a dock. You can see HDMI is plugged in. I have no additional power plugged in, so... We have it powered here with HDMI because there is no power uh, output. Now you may be able to run that A cable from the back of the dock and uh, move that over to the monitor for power. But you know, this is just one way of doing it. Now, HDMI is great, but what about one cable operation? Everybody wants to know, can I do one cable operation? One cable operation, what does that mean? That means that the device you're using has enough power to power both the device and the monitor without external power and be able to send over the video display. So you can see right here, one cable does it all. Now there's no charging going on here. So your Steam Deck is not going to run any longer plugged into the monitor like that. In fact, you'll be draining power a lot faster. So we don't want that. Same thing with Dex, one cable operation, probably better in the field if you could do that. So that works out. All right, you've probably seen everything that you need to see. So what do I think? I think it's okay. It feels a little hollow. Um, most of the monitors that I've reviewed, portable monitors feel a little heftier, a little, th this kind of resonates a little bit when you tap on it. So it feels a little bit on the hollow side, but that may be because of the touch screen. Um, it does, of course, is a fingerprint magnet as always. And uh, yeah, I mean, the buttons are off, but they're all like that. Th this, I don't know. I don't know how long this, hinge is going to hold up. It holds up tight at the at the uh, top there, but it starts to get a little flimsier with the lower angle. The speakers, this and they fire as well as any other speakers. Uh, I would recommend putting something behind it to bounce the sound off. But if you need a touch screen, so that's what we're talking about here. If you need a touch screen, you buy something like this. But if you don't need a touch screen, maybe, you know, you should consider. Look at the Steam Deck versus this, right? It, the Steam Deck's a pretty good size screen. This doesn't buy you a whole lot, but my phone, oh yeah. And what about my Switch? I mean, if you're a Switch user, of course you don't need a touch screen, right? That's a, that's a lot of screen right there, but a little less if you're a Steam Deck user, but if you're a phone user, it would be great. So yeah, here's the bottom line, right? You can get a quality monitor with just as good as specs as this without the touch screen 
for somewhere in the $100 range, maybe even a little bit less. But when you start adding a touch screen to things, it starts to get a little bit more expensive. Now I'd like to see this at about $129, but 150 is not crazy. It's a decent display that has good viewing angles, HDR, the whole bit, but is it what you need? Only you can decide. All right, I'm Shane Armandro. Thanks so much for watching. Like, subscribe, hit the bell, and we'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.